All right, Big Bang, today is Thursday. It's November 4th. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. A couple guests today. We got Dante, we got Chief. That means we have a free swim. How are we doing, Dante? Pretty good, man. Just uh, brightened up the office a little bit. Showered us. Showered. I feel like I've never, I will, I don't know. Like I, right, I, This guy, Halloween is over. He flips into Christmas spirit. Yeah. Like he's just showering everybody. <laughs> I, I was about guests. to say, like, I, I'll never have a baby shower, but I was just showered here today. <laughs> This is what I, now I know what it feels like. I mean, I'm glad these pieces have a home now. I'm not gonna lie. I'm yeah, kind, I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to memorabilia and autographs and stuff. And uh, I, when I was a single guy, it was great because yeah. I got to hang the stuff up and display it. And then I moved <laughs> in with my fiance, and it all had to go in a storage unit. So <laughs> that's funny yeah. how that works. Like that's the funniest point. Like why are you donating these? Well. I'm not allowed to have them. She's <laughs> let me keep one thing in the house, and it's it was in my office, which has now turned into like her, her workout her workout room, uh, or Can our workout room. Can I guess? Yeah, Tom Brady, <laughs> something. No. Robert, that was the first thing to go. Gronk. Really? The Patriot stuff. Yeah, the Patriot stuff was the first shit to go. Really? Yeah. No, I get. Philly, to, Philly I got to keep my wings poster signed by Jordan. The black and white. The, I, I had the guy recreate it. The one that's the Barstool Chicago. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, you had that? Yeah, I have that. Did he black sign it for you? Yeah, no, no. I, I, you bought it signed? No, I had a friend who worked at his camp get it signed for me. Gotcha. He signs. So he does this camp every year. I don't know if he still does it, but he was doing it. My friend coached at it. And as a gift, in addition to whatever they got paid, they got to get uh one item signed and one picture with him and he worked it for like 10 years so he's like i don't need another jordan autograph do you want something signed it's like yep so i had him sign the wings poster it's worth like 10 grand Jesus. really yeah if you go online they're like 99.99 i believe it. i yeah. i wish your fiance was like eh. put that in the trash too no <laughs> i wish that i wish that there was like a uh Something we could have done with that. Like, you, she came in and was like, all right, this. And we had, like, an auction. <laughs> like, yes, no, no, no. That would have been great to mediate. That would have been unbelievable. No, but I got some great shit in there, man. I got all these. I got, like, all the, I got like all the Chicago has-beens, like, jerseys signed and framed, like, Urlacher, Cutler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D-Rose. Like, like, all, like, Riz, now it's Rizzo, Bryant, yeah, like, all the cubs. collecting dust somewhere. Yeah, now they're just sitting in my storage unit. But they're, my, so, yeah, my I would, favorite I would bring them in here, that. but they're signed to me, so I don't want, like. Yeah, when they're personalized, yeah. it's The Bulls Miller Lite tin sign to me is, yeah. the best. Yeah, so one. if you're if you're listening and not watching, which if you do want to watch visually, this is posted every day on the Barstool Chicago YouTube. Subscribe. Um, yes, please subscribe. There's a big tin, a big Barstool, or a big Bulls Miller Lite thing. That's awesome. That's like uh, aluminum. What is that? I don't know. I think it's probably tin. Yeah, yeah tin makes sense. Yeah. But I thought so. I have a I have a Bulls and a Blackhawks one. I bought a. I, so I've told you before. I, for some weird reason, as a kid, I was a huge Blackhawks fan. It was because of Ronick and Belfour and Chelios Chelly. before I hated them. And they're the the greatest video game team ever assembled. Yeah, and I just it was weird being in Boston and being a Hawks fan, mm -hmm. but. When they knocked down Chicago Stadium, obviously when I was still a kid. I just just this mythical place. Yeah, growing up and like you still hear stories from people today that it was the loudest place you've ever been. It used to shake. No one could fucking come in there and win. It was just this awesome place. So when whenever I saw stuff again in my single life, I would try to scoop it up. So like I got these signs. I thought that was the Hawks one. I have a I have a Hawks Miller Light one too. That's sick. but I got bricks. Yeah. Um, I tried to get a seat, but it was too expensive. That they say that uh, the old stadium, when they would cheer the anthem, because that's where that tradition was born, that it would the stadium would shake so much that the dust that was like settled on the rafters would like shake off and like fall down to the ice. I like, believe it. Like, so you'd have like this little plume of dust coming down during the anthem. They're that's supposed awesome. to be unbelievable. Like that. that's just all my dad tells me. Yeah, it was just crazy for both yeah, and the Bulls. I don't remember it at all. No, I don't. Yeah, and the Bulls too. Like there's a picture of Jordan <clears throat> coming up. Remember, like the hallway was the black and white tile, like the cafeteria yeah. tile mm -hmm. of him coming up the stairs. And you can see, I don't know how they got this picture. You can see the uh, railings like vibrating from the cheers. It's, I got to find this well, picture. He, it's he fucking used, crazy. He, they spent you know x amount of millions, of hundreds of millions of dollars in the United Center, 
And the story is that Jordan walked around and goes, this place sucks. Like the, really? first, like the first time he walked in, he goes, it's cavernous. It sucks. You know what's crazy about it, too? It's already like, like over the 30 years old. Yeah, like, it's like the, the oldest stadium. Like 20 years old? 25 yeah. years old? Is it really? When did it open? I think it opened in 94. So they broke around. Yeah, 94. Yes. Yeah. Open in 94. So I like it. Old. It's fucking big. I mean, if you go to other arenas, like I went to Bridgestone a few weeks ago, it's tiny. It feels yeah. like all state. Bridgestone is awesome for hockey, though. Agreed. But again, like going from the United Center, which yeah. is really big, it doesn't feel big, but compared to other ones, then you realize how big it is. I went to uh, a game in Philly. A hockey, it was like a Flyer Sharks game, like a random game, maybe in like 2016 or 17. And it reminded me when you're in your seat, a lot of the United Center, when you go out, the concourses were like our old office, like just so <laughs> tiny and narrow. Like it was like this massive, like angry Philadelphia people like this is a recipe for yeah. disaster <laughs> compared to the United Center where they have like the big wide yeah, yeah, right. concourses. But uh, no, I don't hate the UC. It's, it's cool. I don't love it, though, either. That's yeah, fine. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's not like it doesn't. What don't you like about it? I, I think it is too cavernous. I, I think it's not like um, – like I, I'm trying to think of other arenas I've been to. I've been to games. St. Louis sucks. But I, like the Pepsi Center gets probably probably gets louder uh, out in Colorado. I think they're calling it something else now. But like the, where the Avs and Nuggets play, like that place yeah. gets loud. You know who did a great job with their new arena is Detroit. Everybody says the that. The Little Caesars Arena is – Yeah, it's nice. It's old school where – it doesn't. You know how United Center goes up and back. Yeah, it's a, which is yeah. why you said it feels cavernous. This goes kind of up, straight up. So even if you're on the second level or third level, you're still like over the action. Yeah. You're not a mile away from it. Right. Like so I, it helps with the acoustics too. I mean, it's fucking loud in yeah, there. Yeah, I went to a, a Big Ten tournament the first time I ever went to a basketball game at the uh, United Center. I went to the Big Ten tournament and like went on a whim. I was probably like, I don't know, but it had like literally the top row behind one of the baskets it was like you like you couldn't even tell what was going on like you <laughs> could like a guy might make a shot and it's like did that go in but you just have to react based upon how other people react and you spent all your time watching the the scoreboard you so, know what i always wonder and i want to do it sometime but i'm too lazy is you know that bar that's at the way top yeah. in the corner have mm -hmm. you ever been up there yeah i think you see well what's it look what's it look like from up there it's so high up so once you're, you're talking about the bar like the bar that's in the section like it's built like into the up section in the corner. i think it's budweiser i don't want to like shout them out if it's not but i, think I don't it's think like it a budweiser is budweiser bar it's way it's way the fuck up it's like yeah. by like the press boxes but it's oh that one yeah i don't, I don't know about I'm that one sure. i did go to um a game in the upper upper level uh, suites. I went to a Bruins Hawks game there with our guy or our, old, our guy Dave Hawkberg. Dave and I went like last March, like right before the shutdown, and it was like kind of cool, like because that it, that overhangs the 300 section, so it gives you that impression yep. that you were talking about where it's like it goes straight up. So you're like almost like you're suspended over yeah. the ice. It was kind of cool. Interesting way to watch a game. I sat up there for game five of the, I think it was 2011 Celtics Bulls series. The that Derek was, Rose coming out party one? Was one of the best fucking I think that was basketball nine. series ever. Ray Allen dropped like 59 points. Yeah. The, the uh, Celtics still lost in triple overtime. I'm pretty sure that was 09. That, that was like Derek Rose's like – I'm fucking here series, right? And uh, no, they still had, uh, what's his face? The kid from UConn, the guy from UConn, Ben Gordon. Ben Gordon yeah. went on. Him and Ray Allen were like yeah, trading that, threes. That, that Celtic series? Yeah. Yeah. yeah seven, it was crazy. Or, it was uh, crazy Heinrich like Heinrich, threw yeah. Rondo into the yeah. scorer's table. They Those teams hated each other. No Sione. Yeah, no Sione. I don't think no, was he there at that point? I don't know. Well, but I, I, was, so. uh, I was up in that, yeah. that sweet level looking down. It was, I can't it was imagine just like you said. for basketball, but... Um, there's also a John Cusack signed picture from Eight Men Out. I appreciate that. But we're uh, great actor. I had to buy that. I bought that online the yeah. other the other day. But <laughs> we're not going to tell. We're not going to tell him about that. Yeah, he wore the uniform, and he's so as unobservant. A word. We directionally correct. Continue. He probably won't even realize it. <laughs> oh, WSD. Yeah. 
I think it'd be I think it's pretty hard to miss because he's going to be sitting in the middle for the run or right where I'm sitting rather for the rundown, and he's going to look at you, and it's going to be right you in know his eyesight. What's going to happen? There's other big items. He's going to catch those first, and then he's going to like yeah. scan. So he'll see it. Like we'll be in the middle he'll of like it. having a good discussion about whatever the topic is, and be like, "Hey, hey what the fuck? <laughs> what is that? What the fuck?" Um. Also, if you're watching, you should also notice we have these buckets on our desks, on my desk, on Chief's little table there. Barstool Bites, a new Barstool initiative. Um, it's a Barstool kitchen. It's here in Chicago. It's alive. Um, download the Barstool Bites app at barstoolbites.com, or like I said, you can just download it in the App Store. And, uh, Wait, check it's its delivery. own app? Yeah, it's oh, its own no app. Oh, no way. So it's near you. You get free delivery exclusively for the next 30 days only. Oh, no shit. So yes. you don't have to go through like Uber Eats or anything? You can. Oh. It's on there too. But obviously, if you run it, it's going to be cheaper on the app. Sick. From what I understand. The branding's great. I mean, the, yep. the packaging looks fucking awesome. It looks good. And it is good, Shout actually. out to whoever was buying that. I'm very impressed. It's good. I had the Clem Swishes earlier. Uh, like, what are the, the cocktail dogs or some shit? What's the prop, proper terminology? Pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a blanket. That's Come what on. I was looking for. Why are they yeah. called swishes? Well, I don't, I don't know. know. He it's used like to call that from thing. like yeah. J.R. Smith. and uh, I don't know why he calls it that. But yeah. it, it makes me laugh every time. I don't even understand what he's talking about. Yeah, we all have food items on there. I have a wing bucket that's in front of me. Nice. So you get a bucket of wings. Uh, White Sox Dave is a chicken tender bucket. Carl is a sampler bucket. And uh, Chief is a popcorn bucket. No. So, oh, what do you mean? Popcorn's out. Is it really? Yeah. Give, oh, me Give me the popcorn. Give me the popcorn. I want that. No, nope. popcorn. Yeah, he was, he popcorn. So it's upset. not like. I'm yeah, so upset to get popcorn. Is it fla- Is it like truffle yeah. flavored popcorn? No, no it's, it's like, like they. Hit, it doesn't matter because it's not on the menu anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't even my call. <laughs> um, popcorn's good. I love, I'm, a, I'm no, a huge popcorn guy. I love. I, I love popcorn too, but like I would never order like the time it gets to you. It's never going to be good. Yeah, you never know. Yes, I do know. Ed. What do you? If I could, if I could order AMC popcorn, I would. I would make it on the stove top, and Dante. it would be better than that, guaranteed. You're going to think I'm insane, but it varies theater to theater. It absolutely okay, agree. does. Agree. It, I'm not talking it about. Varies. I'm talking about everything. The pop, the kernel, everything. Agree. It varies day to day. If you make it on your stove top, I, people are like, "This chief is such a bitch." A little bit of coconut oil. I'm going to change. A little bit of coconut oil. I'm going to change your life after this show. Fuck how? Me. Did Cons tell you how I changed his life no. a few weeks ago? No. We were. Uh, Kelly Keegs put some tweet out about how do you make popcorn on the stove without burning it. What? Send her this link. There is this contraption. It's from Denmark. It looks like a little spaceship. It's flat like this. It's flimsy rubber. It opens up so it looks like almost like a bowl with a. Um, narrow cylinder at the bottom okay it has this little top that pops on it it's like 9.99 on amazon i can't think of the name of it because it's some weird well no free Danish ads thing. anyways you buy this thing you pour the kernels in the bottom of it you fill it up to this line and you shoot a little bit of you can do coconut oil you can do popcorn oil that they sell in the grocery store you can do butter put it in the microwave for two and a half minutes it comes I'm out already out. Listen I'm to me. Already out. Listen to me. There's a huge difference. I'm an anti microwave popcorn guy too because those bags are like they just, stink yeah, and like they very, smell. It's like very bad. Cancerous. For you too. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're cancerous. But this is the same as doing it on the stove. But it never burns. It's perfect pop every time. Let me You're tell not gonna. You he likes to wear a shower cap and like listen to me. Listen to me. Cap. Listen to me. I'm gonna. Br- I'm gonna about? buy you one, and I want you to try it once, and then I want you to look me in the face Hold and tell on a me. Second. You're I, I. I will. Always... Cons texts me and goes, "You changed me and my me Cons and my wife's is, life." You know how Cons is. And Chaps you tried know, to like, chirp, and Chaps tried to like chirp, and was like, "Don't do it. It's way too complicated. It's two fucking pieces of plastic. What is complicated about that?" You think. I'm not going to get into the whole cancer thing. Anyways, you don't have to. <laughs> Thank you for not getting into yeah, that. Yeah. Thank First of all, I want to go back to whatever your shower cap insult was. <laughs> but I guarantee, like, I'll try that. It's not better than making on stovetop. Just a little bit of coconut oil, salt in the oil. I know, you but it's put so, the kernels in. How, it's what kind so of easy moron to burn, can, though. It's so no, easy it's to burn. Not. If you go, If you try to pop too much. It's very easy to burn the stuff at the bottom because it, it can't move up. It's, it's You have down. to shh. I know that's why you got to do a little bit at a time, but then you got to do like three or four pops. Like, no, dude, yeah. I, I eat when I pop popcorn. I? I pop like this much. I'm, well, I'm yeah, fucking, I make I make one pot 
I like a pot worth and you fill the so that you don't layer it, but it's like the whole bottom layer is filled and then the the pot fills up and then you dump it in a bowl. What size the, pot? Are you using like a like a pasta pot or are you using like a like a sauce it's pan? It's probably like honestly like the size of this bar stool bites. Yeah, I would go I, I would go through that in three in two handfuls. <laughs> I would have to pop ten of those. I mean, that's just too much popcorn. This thing fills. It's like this. Uh, basically, I have this like a barstool lot. bites needs to g- put me on the popcorn. Anyway, they watch. It's watch us sell. Because of me, it's watch us off sell the menu. It's off the menu because they know it's not a good delivery product. It's never going to be a good delivery product. Disagreed. Hard disagree. And dude, what do you? Garrett's popcorn is huge, chief. <sighs> but you Garrett's is not pop- fresh, hot. But it popcorn. doesn't matter. You, you can't know what say you're popcorn ge- can't be done. That's a Garrett's whole different thing. That's a whole. If you're ordering popcorn, they're like, oh, I'm going to have like popcorn. It's there. That's not going to be the caramel corn that Garrett's is doing. Packaging. I want to say that they were like spice. They were. Uh, they were flavored, but they're they were flavored. they're supposed to be served warm. They weren't gonna. They're gonna get the to you. It's gonna be stale. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be. I the disagree. Same. It's hard to do, but it's not impossible. So that's my point. You're better. Anyways, Great. we right? moved on to fries. I'm the fry guy now. I'm doing fries. Are fries you? are way, way harder hard, to yeah, deliver. Dude. Did you not have the fries the first if time? You don't have. Fr- if you don't have thing. fries within ten minutes of them coming out of the fryer. However, however, did you see Wendy's has cracked the code on fries? And I hate to do free ads. Excuse me, but they have a new fry. That they claim they cracked the code on. I saw what that they that were mean? like two to one better than McDonald's. How? They said that they found a new recipe that can make fries travel. Because you know how they can't travel? Yeah. Fries like are hard to travel. They said like they cracked the code. They figured these out. They is cook it, them longer. Is it the fry or is it the vehicle it's transported in? It's the fry. Really? It's the actual fry. It's not transported. They the cracked fry. the potato? What are we talking they about? They cracked the way it's done. All right. That's what they claim. Try it out. I'm go- I'm going to today. Because <laughs> if that's um, true, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they say. But yeah. anyways, BarstoolBites.com, App Store, Google Play. <laughs> the longest Apple ad. Store. The is. longest ad read of it all is. time. It is. And, and perhaps, you know, maybe you got to take a shit. You should also use Dude Wipes. Dude Wipes. Right, Dante. Did you bring a Dude Wipe when you ran the marathon? Big mistake if you didn't. Huge mistake. It was. You guys told me to, and I still didn't. You Where sure? are they, by the way? Because I'm going to grab a pack when I walk out this store. We got to get supplied up. We got we to hit him up. I got to hit up my guy. He's Ryan. hoarding them. Yeah, get uh, me some. They come here, and he just scoops them. Who? Get me some. This guy. Me? That's, I did that once, but I, I they, we haven't gotten any in a while. Hey, so they're really flushable? Like they're biodegradable. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. a lot of those like white, like baby wipes, you're not. I guess you're not allowed to. Fl- you can't flush. flush those. These are flushable. They're a plant-based fiber. Uh, I flush them all the time. If you feel them too, and you feel them dried up, it's like, oh yeah, like makes this sense. Is, why would you not be able to? Yeah. That's great. So yeah, so it's so environmentally sound. Yes, mm-hmm. that's great. Go get your dude wipes. Dudewipes.com. Use code BC15 for 15 percent off your order. You can also get the dude powder, the dude shower. Um, and the wipes are great products for those hot and sweaty, sticky days on the course. Obviously, those are done. But uh, still, you know, it, it's a season where people are traveling, dude. People are going to Phoenix. People oh, are yeah. going to Florida. They're still golfing just because we're in, you know, the fucking pole, North Pole here. But it's also sweat your ass off in a bar season, too. Oh, yeah. So be prepared for that. Yeah. Yep. Bars not being able to get the temperature right is just dude, one of the worst things of all. You time. know what, though? You, you got to. You can't apply. How have you addressed this in your places? Listen, you, it, you can't judge them all the same because some of them are at the mercy of if they have other floors, sometimes the landlord's like, you're all getting the same fucking heat, same thermostat. Yeah, that's tough. Mm, so that's you can't tough. even control your own thermostat, which sucks that's for some tough. places. And you know, some of these buildings in Chicago are fucking 80 years old. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's so, tough. So it does suck. So grab a dude wipe for that. Dudewipes.com. Dude wipes. Enter code BC15, 15% off your entire order. Um, can you, are you at, speaking of bars, are you at liberty to speak on uh, what happened with a certain bar around here last week? Mm, I, I am. Starts with a P. I am, but I'm, I'm not. You're not doing I, it? Okay. Yeah, I don't need, I don't need that trouble. Okay. I didn't, I, I just don't, I have no knowledge of what's going on. I'll tell so you, was, I'll tell you. Right, I, I would love curious. to know. Sorry, everyone. I was just curious. Um, we did watch a doc. We talked about it being a little bit of a chimpanzee week. Um, so 
What did you guys think? It, it, it was called Jane. It was on Disney Plus, actually. Yep. Um, you said it freaked you out. It didn't freak me out. It, it made me sad. Why? I mean, I don't want to jump right to the end of it. Um, obviously, she is a fucking saint. I mean, one of the... Insanely, insanely impressive person. Yeah, just, I mean, goes from secretary to... Yes. I mean, she had no scientific background, which is I part of the reason... I didn't know that. Did you know that? Nope. I feel like everyone knows the name Jane Goodall, but I didn't know anything about her background. But yeah, you're, that point about she's they, just a 26-year-old secretary? Yeah, they. that's why she was put in the position she was, is because the scientists were like, we want somebody that doesn't have... A bias going into this we i mean this, you know scientific method is yeah. so whatever so they were like we've been studying this our whole lives even if we try our hardest not to be biased we can't help it let's take this girl yeah and throw her in the fucking congo and it is something that she always wanted like they right. went back to like her little diaries from when she was a kid and it was right now i want to live among the animals i want you know like i want to go to africa from the time she was 10 11 12 13 years old and then you know, she's working as a secretary, working as a as a waitress, and then she gets this opportunity and she becomes I was trying to think of this, like one of the most one famous top fifty hundred women ever. Oh hell right? yeah. Right? Hell yeah. Like hell super yeah. famous, like changed the way that, you know, the world looks at chimpanzees and, yep. and she's wildlife. like the name you associate with Yeah. What what do you what's the not chimpanzee what's the like genus or whatever called the what the primates 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 yes yes yes, yes. yes. thank you ed yeah and <clears throat> super impressive man i didn't know that they knew nothing before this i didn't know that she had never no been education. observed in the wild yes. yeah um the doc in and of itself not the best i'll be honest i i really liked it i i felt like it didn't say a lot like it would like say a few sentences and then it would just th show a few shots of nature okay and like i didn't i didn't like get it was it was more of a doc on her yeah which i was cool with rather than chimps so um like the like it got to the point with the kid and that was like a 15 minute scene and it really said nothing oh uh, see i i when I was watching this, I was like, man, I'm really liking this. I thought the music was great. I thought because it's all this like a lot of it is original footage that her first husband was taking. And like she was the subject because it was like, wait, like I didn't even know that there was all this footage of her. And this is in like the 19, late 1950s and 60s into the 70s and 80s where it, so you would ex expect like the camera work to be like shitty uh -huh. but it had been like digitally redone so everything looked like kind of clear and in hd and in color and i thought the music was great i thought the nature shots were great and i thought the story was great how she's just like journaling everything and watching everything and she is alone so like the first time she went to africa and this gombe forest that she was uh, primarily in and which is where those chimpanzee wars from uh from tuesday that we talked about were on those are in Tanzania and the fact that she went there with in that period of time as a 26 year old untrained and it's like well you can't go alone well I'll bring my mom and like so then and then it's like well you know the, these are animals I've never really seen uh, people before had interaction with people before so she just like walked and hiked and climbed in the jungle for nine months before she had like a positive interaction with a single chimp and then before you know it she's just like in their community like they've just accepted her as this like and she called herself like the big white chimp no i'm not saying it's not impressive oh i thought the story was impressive oh too. the story was very impressive but i'm just saying what i thought i was getting into where i thought like especially after the one we did on tuesday like mm -hmm. i thought we were going to see a lot more of that oh okay. like i was expecting to learn a lot more about chimps it was more about jane which yeah, I, I did say like I five minutes ago I was cool with, but I don't know. It was like it did need to be an hour and a half at all. I don't think so. I, I man, I guess not. I mean, I now I, I will say like I when I was watching, I, I got excited for future me to use that documentary as a sleep aid. Because you have like jungle noises, you have yeah. the good music, the soft narration. <laughs> I'm like, I can't wait to fall asleep to this. No, and I'm day. down for those. Like, yeah. I like watching those, but I just, I guess I didn't know it was going to be like that. I didn't know chimps could get polio. No. That was 
shocking and horrifying to see. And I guess like the tool part was interesting. Yeah, and I guess it was the mo the tool part. Like yeah. she discovered that they you know and the, they would use like these sticks or grass to like go into termite yep. uh, mounds and. And that was the first time that had ever been observed. So they had to use rocks to break stuff. Right. So they had to redefine what it means to be human. Cause that was the old definition is yep. the ability to think and make tools. Well, it's like, well, chimps can reason and they can use tools as well. So then we have to, we have to reclassify ourselves. So we're above them because yeah. they are capable of that. And I, I don't know. I felt like I did learn stuff about chimps in that. I'm just saying I could have read about everything she did on Wikipedia and then I could have watched that and like observed her climbing a rock for, you know, on and off for so long. Wow. Okay. I don't know. I I really observation. I thought it was great. I thought I thought it was. What's your take? Uh, I mean, I was blown away by, like she said, the dedicate. I mean, she dedicated her entire life to this cause. I mean, she was there for decades. 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 Like still. Yeah, I think she's eighty-seven years old now. She still goes to Tanzania. It's crazy. Yeah. And I said she's insanely impressive. I yeah. just, when I hear that she has footage from the 60s and the 70s, I was like, oh, fuck. You know, that really got me excited. So maybe I set the expectations too high. So be, I see, like, I, I thought all those, they had that scene kind of when they, she has, like, been accepted by them to a degree. And then they found out that she had bananas in the, uh, in the, at the campsite. And they changed. Yes. And that they, was a good they, scene. And I they, agree. like, so it's like, all right. So now they, they kind of go through this whole thing where they're so afraid of her for months that if she's, if they smell her, she's in the yeah. vicinity, they take off, they climb the trees, they run away from her. Then, like, they, she has the breakthrough with the one chimp. And then before you know it, they're just like, they're stealing shit. They're chewing, like, the paper bag, the canvas bags, and they're like breaking into boxes. Yeah. And, like, the fact that they can go through this whole thing so quickly. I don't know. I thought I, I I thought it was like an interesting look at chimps and a fascinating look at her as I well. Guess, I guess where really like I'm gonna go back again where it really lost me was the kid part. Like that was like 20 minutes and it, yeah. it just felt like it went nowhere. Well, I, I think that was like a used as a tool to be like you know every other young and they had just shown the scene where uh, like the primate like the chimp mother and her baby chimp, which I thought that was super fucking cute. The little baby chimp and how the mother interacted with it, and then she has her own kid. And it was like, well, I love you, but the chimps in my work are more important. So, like, she eventually sends a kid to live in England with her grand, with the mother, the grandmother, and and the dad is off shooting other things in Africa. So, to me, that was just like it was a tool to be like, this is a part of her life, and it's motherhood. It's like the most important thing that you do. But for her, it was still always going to be about her work and chimpanzees and things like yeah. that. Well, so I, I thought that was like, I thought that was like an important, if you're making it's the documentary is called Jane. You can't like gloss over that aspect of it. Yeah, I no, guess that I would guess be my not. take on it. Oh, true. Good point. I guess not. But it just, but if it was really all about Jane, it should have been, it, it kind of tried to do both. I guess. Yeah. That's what, that's my point. Yeah. But uh, regardless, Super, super impressive lady. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. Kind of cute. Yeah. At, and, you know, in the 26 yeah. year old. Uh, well, that's what she said. She had to disprove a lot of people because they're like, oh, people just like her because of her legs. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and then she falls in love with the photographer and they get yeah. married, like in the yeah. jungle. They get, they, that was the thing where they like sent. Uh, and she was pissed off that he was coming in the first place. Right. Yeah. 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 I also read up on that too, her afterwards. She was like the first to name chimps like give like, them like, yes like for research purposes like i guess you're just supposed to number them like it should have been like gray beard should have been like one and then fee fee yeah. should have been, it should be numbers yeah because of emotional attachment yeah so uh that it's was just like too. the difference that she had no training she didn't yeah. know that i mean i i was emotionally attached to the I chimps fucking, i love monkeys man that's yeah. why i was like so sad watching this is <clears throat> They, I mean, it was a Disney production. If this was a, a Netflix production, it would have been a lot darker. Yeah. Like the devastation. Yes. Of like, and I think I was waiting for Humphrey. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, was, okay. I was waiting for Humphrey. So, yeah. I mean, that stuff is like heartbreaking. Yeah. And I don't know how she's done this for this long crazy. and like witnessed all this stuff. I mean, she's amazing. It's crazy that the footage too. She's yeah. Amazing. It's wild. And the footage wasn't shitty. No, it, it was. Wasn't. It didn't look old. So I was I was impressed by on that as well. The banana part was sick though. Yeah. 
That was yeah. great. And just so far, they're like, yeah, let's just steal all their shit. Yeah. yeah. And how about the fucking lady just getting banged out by everybody on that island? <laughs> lady chimp, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's, we talked <laughs> about that. We talked about that. But it was crazy to see. It was like, yeah. whoa, I'm not ready for this. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean, it was graphic. <laughs> you, when you were saying, like, oh, it would have been a lot worse if it was on Netflix, that part couldn't have been much worse. <laughs> that was, that was. But they, uh, the way like, they, you could see the guy, like, you could see the chimp come. Yeah, but the like, way he they. had, like, a cum face. The on. way they worded it was, like, <laughs> so different. She just allowed everybody. It was just like, whoa. And they were just like, oh. That was something. Uh, yeah. That was something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really liked it. If you're looking for a fall asleep documentary, this is going to be the one for you because everybody needs one of those. And it's not to say that I was never bored, but I love like a good, like almost like the Bob Ross voice where like she has that kind of like soothing British accent voice, the jungle sounds, the piano music. It was, it's uh, maybe tonight, maybe tonight's the night for that. You're going to rewatch it again. I'm going to put it on and fall asleep in 30 seconds. Right, who's the guy that voices over those other ones? Adborough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David. Yeah. 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 Through the other nature ones? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was not him. He's got a he's got a newer one. It's called Life on One Planet or something. Yeah, I've seen, yeah it's on Netflix. You've seen right? it? I I've definitely put it on before. I haven't yeah. watched it yet, but I heard it's really good. I heard it's kinda like Planet Earth and those. Like that. But he's giving I think he produced it rather than narrated it, so he's kind of directing where it goes and all that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I want to watch that one. I just, right, get dep- I just get depressed by these nature things, man. Why is that? Because we're fucking terrible to animals and the planet. It's like, yeah, we're getting better though. We, I mean, I think we are. I don't think fucking Asia is. No well, offense. Well, it's not even an offense thing, but they say there's some kind of study that says you have to be above a certain level GDP, and then once you are, then you start caring about the environment. So you can make an argument that the best way to save the planet is to be short term bad, make everybody as rich as possible in the short term. And then all those people in these developing countries will be like, holy fuck, we have to save the planet. And so it might be like a rough 10, 15 years while they're using cheap fuels and things like that. But as they raise their economy and raise the living standard and it's like, you know, this has been like universally true cross culturally that you get to a certain level of financial stability and economic stability. And that's when you start to care more about your surroundings and like the, the greater planet. Cause you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. So nice. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you're right, but I want to believe you. So I will believe you. It's a, it's a theory that's out there. It's, it's not good. mine. I can't remember no, I where hope, it's I from, hope, but it's, it's, that gives it, hope. It, yeah. It gives you, it gives you hope. And thanks, it's just, thanks chief. Yeah. I'm, you know <laughs> me, you feel a little positive better. guy. Makes you feel a little better. Go check it out. Any big any big plans this weekend, Dante? Where are you going? Uh, no. Nothing? Finally, finally chilling here. How is we, Michigan State? <laughs> Dude, oh, I'm so glad you brought this up. Dude, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's too bad none of you guys came. It was wild. The picture looked insane. The it, overhead shot. It, and that was like they could have gotten such a better if – I told uh, – what's his name? Blatman? Yeah, 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 Dave yeah. Blabman. Like, you guys got to get your own drone out here. Like, I know it's over now, but next year you got to get your own drone out here so you're not, like, scouring Twitter for someone else's picture. Yeah. Dude, it was – I got up there. How many people do you think? Oh, maybe 1,500. Okay. Maybe 2,000 from what I could see, and I was, like, right next to the stage because it was raining, so they had me under a tent. Thank God because my computer still got destroyed. Yeah, someone threw a beer. I saw your uh, no, like like thirty beers. Really, Dave? I, Dave caught one like in the like neck, like shoulder. Oh, really? So he comes out and he's like, "You got to play Hail to the Victors." I'm like, all right, that's going to be hilarious. Yeah. So again, they're all f- the production team's freaking out. Like I've never done this before. Like, can you make sure it's queued up for the second he's? D-? I'm like, yeah, dude. I like this is my first rodeo. I got it. <laughs> Ten times they're like coming up to me. Can I listen to it like really quick and make sure it's like, all right, man. So he comes out, we drop it immediately. Everyone's like, what the fuck? And then he comes up on stage and he's like flipping everyone off. It was like straight out of WWF. It was, it was fucking hilarious. (laughs) And then the beers just started raining. There were kids in this like apartment building to our right, leaning out the windows, firing shit. There were 
kids standing on top of cars, chucking shit. Wild. Yeah, it was. Did you nuts. go home right away? Uh, and I went back to um, my buddies in oh, nice. uh, on the other side of the, on the other side of the state. The weather was really shitty. Oh, was it? Yeah, and but it was fucking it was Big Ten weather. It was. Yeah. It was a great turnout though, man. Mich- I forgot how like nuts Michigan State is. It's not conducive to being a party school like other Big Ten schools right. are, but yeah. they make it a fucking party school. Yeah. Those kids are nuts. Yeah. They love Michigan State. Yeah, it was it was a good time. Good. Would you what'd you do? You did, did you leave the house? Dude, I was kind of sick all weekend. Oh, I were been kind of sick for like So I remember you were days. saying going into the weekend you were looking to have one. That was the weekend before that. Oh, did you end up doing anything that weekend? Yeah, I went oh, out. Oh, no, yeah. you liar. Why? You were out with the chicks in the office that girls. Thursday oh, night. I went out Thursday with them. Yeah. But I just went to their show. So would you get sick from that? You got sick from Maybe. ripping I, cigs I, at I, Richards. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I really think I did. I bet you did. Yeah. We, we, I mean, Dude, that's an aggressive Marble Thursday night. Reds are aggressive. Yeah, no shit. I can't believe people actually do those. No shit, I don't dude. think they really do anymore. No, they do, I think. They're called cowboy killers <laughs> know, for a dude. reason. Those things are fucking no joke. I had two just in the spirit of the bar. Yeah. And uh, They have a vending machine for them there still? No. No, no, no. Was and I was like, my throat hurt. <laughs> and I woke up and I was, I've, I've literally been like kind of sick since Friday. T- like just getting out of it today. Yeah. It was rough, you, like, dude. That was great. How was it? Took sh- tar right to your lungs. Like that'll <laughs> knock you out for a few days. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. How was the show? Um, good. Oh, great, great. Yeah. I wanted I don't to go. Why, I don't know why I paused. But I wanted to go. I saw Ed on Wednesday the night before, and he was like, "I don't know what these girls it, do," insane. but he was like, "The fucking <clears throat> demand has been out of control." It was insane, Dante. It was like the Oprah show. For you, there was crazy. There was two hundred and eighty girls. And th- well, there was probably like. From what I could tell, maybe 10 guys with their girlfriends. So there was 270 girls, 10 guys. Nice. <laughs> and uh, and it was just nuts. They were going Sounds nuts. like a blackout show. Did you go up on stage like they do with Trent? No, I no. didn't talk to one girl and stood upstairs and watched the Bulls. You were in the, v- <laughs> <laughs> you're in the, v- you're in the VIP yes, lost. that's yeah. what I did. But it was great. They loved those girls. They did a great job. And they like... So what do they do? Is it like a Q and a it's a really interactive show. Like they do kind of their show. Mm-hmm. They do like some like dancing shit. They do like, like trivia too, right? They do some trivia aspect. They had a guest out. They had grocery store Joe on there. Oh, he's he was a great there? dude. Yeah, he, that's my boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good oh, I dude. wish I knew. Great guy. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a Marlos Park guy. I know. Yeah. He's uh, he's he's got an accent like yeah. people up in your neighborhood because uh-huh. he's from there. We're from the same yeah. area basically. His uh, his cousin was a laundry the laundry king. Remember him from? Uh, yep. Yep. I had him on the podcast. He goes, oh, 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 yeah, oh yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. That's his cousin. Nice. Uh, friend of mine. He's from Hiawatha Park. But it was a, they did a great job. It was, the show was, I'm telling you, there were so many people there going nuts. That's awesome. I got to ask, I, I, I saw him before. I got to, I got to get his uh, gauge on afterwards. <laughs> it was crazy. He's a riot. It was crazy. But yeah, they did well. Then we went to Lost Girl, we went to Richards, and then. How was that's was, a night? Yeah, and like yeah. I've had, I was I, I was I was thinking because you were talking about Marble Reds. I had him as a kid before, you know. But when you go when you're an adult, that's another level. I mean, you, I hate to tell you this, but two cigarettes, two two of them. Yeah, two years off your life. You think so? Probably. <laughs> now you're gonna live to ninety eight. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, How was uh, La Scrolla? Was Armando there? He wasn't. That was the only. Yeah, you went part. late. I'm surprised they. You're fucking VIP if they kept the kitchen open. I love for that you like guy. that. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're on the wall. Agreed. We're yeah. on the wall. But yeah, was uh, was it emptying out when you got there? Yeah, we were the last people there at the end. Okay, so, yeah, so they so, yeah. they took good care of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I hope you were, took good care of them. They were great. Yeah, so um, I hope you took good care of them. At I, you know what, they expensed it, so I had nothing to do with it, and it, I forgot to look, but it was in my head. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. Yeah, um, Franza, Franza. Oh, they're both. They're Italian, great. right? Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah they, so they, they know what's it. up. They, get they know what's up. Yeah. Um, all right, then. Anything else? Uh, no. How was Richards? I, I want to hear about this night. <sighs> Bumping? Slow? Uh, this is my first time there. What? Yeah. Somehow, is that crazy? Yeah, somehow it never went. And, like, I'm... Dude, I've had you're friends, a fucking cash-only bar guy. I know. And I've had friends that have been going there since high school. I just never went with them. You are the 
psychotic cash only bar guy and you've never been to Richards until the last no. week. No, wow. yeah, never been That's there. like your fucking that's like your Iowa. Yeah, exactly. No, it was nice. It's like your field of dreams. It was a lot smaller than I anticipated. Um, really not much room to Did they of, know who you were? No, no, no. Those oh, guys so were they so like, school? Yeah. were they like assholes? Cuz they were fucking dicks there. Oh, yeah, they weren't. Yeah. They weren't. Like people were taking pictures and shit and they were not happy. Yeah, if you're not a regular, they're like they, yeah, and you're taking pictures of like you know the cigs and stuff. They're like, what? Don't be stupid. Like yeah. you know, you can't. It's like, come on. If you're people, if if people like regulators or whoever, they know. Come, like if they, they know. are gonna find out from me, then they're like the worst investigators right. or uh, regulators. Dude, it's like the last fucking last of the Mohicans. Yes, everybody knows. It's everybody not a, knows. no, no. That's like the last like real mob run spot here in Chicago. Allegedly, yeah. allegedly. I mean, the, like you can kill somebody in there and. They can stay open. <laughs> you can't do that anywhere. That's not alleged. That did happen. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't do it themselves. No, no, of course no, no, not. No. But I mean, if that if that happens in Harry's place, Harry's fucking Harry's out of business. Yeah, yeah. In trouble. By the way, Harry and I went to Tao on uh, Sunday. Wow. First time at Tao. Wow. How was that? Uh, How filmed, did you guys get linked just up? You filmed, two? I filmed a barstool backstage episode. Okay. With uh, I can't say who yet, but. If you do the math, you can figure it out. But Tebow couldn't fly in because he's this Brianna chicken fry thing is exploding. That's yeah, huge. Okay. Huge. Yeah. So so I'm like second fiddle now. So Tebow's <laughs> Tebow's got bigger things to do. So Harry stepped up and crushed it, man. Thank you. Thanks for including me too. I yeah, like doing that. Did an awesome job. So hopefully the video's out next week. Good. Yeah. Keep an eye out. All right, then. That's it. Thanks everybody for listening. Thank you guys. Uh we'll see you tomorrow.